Hello and welcome to Jurassic Reviews. Before we begin, I just want to thank everyone who has either watched or subscribed to this channel. I just hit over 100 subs a few days ago and I am so happy and excited you guys are enjoying these videos as much as I do making them. It really means a lot. I don't have anyone outside of internet communities that I can talk about Jurassic Park and Godzilla stuff with, so it's really been a great outlet for me. So again, thank you so much. On this episode, we'll be taking a look at an X-Plus figure, the Yuji Sakai 30cm Godzilla 2002, the standard version. This is my fourth X Plus Godzilla that uses a sculpt by master sculptor Yuji Sakai. Prior to this figure's announcement and release, I'd been seeing tons of requests and wishes for this figure on the Facebook group. I'm a relatively new X Plus collector, but it seems this particular figure has been wanted for a very long time, and I can see why. First, let's take a quick look at the front of the box, which shows the figure and the logo for the 2002 film Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. Standing at just a little below 12 inches tall and about 11 inches long, this Godzilla strikes a really menacing pose. I've heard that many Sakai sculpts are based on specific shots from the films, and this one is capturing a moment from the beginning of the film when Godzilla attacks during a storm. No matter what angle you look at this figure, he just looks fierce. The closed mouth and the head tilted downwards adds a lot to this mean look that it has going for it. The 2002 suit borrowed a lot from the 1999 suit, but also slimmed it down a bit and made the snout curve downwards. It helped this Godzilla look a lot more angry than the 99 ever did. I think looking at it head on is probably my favorite angle, even if the eyes look a little derpy sometimes. But really, it's just great all around. Like I thought the 91 Sakai looked nasty, but this one beats it. This is by far one of my favorite poses and sculpts for any Godzilla figure. I love it. Looking over the body of this figure is filled with both the tree bark like skin and sharp spikes. The spikes mostly show up the closer you get to the dorsal plates, though there are a few on the legs and arms. The dorsal plates look great and are really sharp, so be careful with it. These spines are another thing carried over from the 99 design, though they are a little smaller. There's some great texture work on them as well, and they do a good job capturing the look from the movie. While we're on the subject of these plates, I also want to mention that the Rick version of this included light up spines. I picked the standard and I'm kind of regretting it. I think this thing would look awesome with the spines lit up. If you want to see what they look like with the light up feature, check out a great video on this figure on the channel Phil the Kaiju King. I'll include the link in the description. Moving to the chest, it's more spiky and scaly. And its neck is really awesome looking. Again, another aspect carried over from the 99 design. It gives a very lizard or dragon like look to it. The head also features a bunch of little spikes, and you'll see its large eyes and its individually sculpted teeth. Moving on down to the tail, the textures on them smooth out a bit compared to the rest of the figure. The tail angles upwards and to the side, reaching higher than the top of the head. The tail, like many other Sakai Godzillas, requires a tail stand, though luckily the tail stand for this one is much smaller than many others. It's something that had kept me away from X-Plus figures at first, but I've gotten used to them. Now let's move on to the paint. The majority of this figure is a dark charcoal gray, like really dark. It seems to be much darker than many of my other figures. I think this was done to try and capture Godzilla's appearance during the storm. My pictures and video are a bit misleading on how dark it actually is. Moving to the head, the eyes are painted white, yellow, and gold with black pupils. Like I mentioned previously, the eyes are big on this guy, and they look great. The teeth are painted white with a bit of beige, and the gums are red. The red paint can look a little messy, but I think it really works well. The nails on the toes and fingers are painted yellow, that transitions to black as they reach the toes and fingers. It's a nice gradient, and the brighter yellow sticks out nicely on an otherwise dark figure. The dorsal plates are painted dark gray that changes to lighter gray as you reach the tips of each spine. They all look fantastic.
before I give my rating for this figure, let's do some comparisons. Here it is with the 2001 Sakai. Here it is with the 25 centimeter scale destroyer. Here it is with the 91 Sakai. Here it is with the 30 centimeter Godzilla 2003. And finally, here it is with the 30 centimeter Mecha Godzilla 2002. Even though the Sakai 2002 is not exactly 30 centimeters tall, it scales really well with this guy, as Godzilla is actually a little bit shorter in the film than Mechagodzilla, so these figures complement each other really well and look great together. For a rating out of 10, I give this figure a 10. I could find no faults with it. This is easily leading the pack for my figure of the year. It's really now just between that and the gigantic 89, unless something else surprises me. Maybe that Prime 1 Gamera if it ever shows up. We'll see. But yeah, the sculpt is beautiful and the paint is awesome. You won't find too many meaner looking Godzillas than this. Pick this one up while you still can. I have a feeling this is going to be a sought after figure. It's a masterpiece. And that does it for the X Plus Yuji Sakai Godzilla 2002. If you enjoyed this review, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.